even couples, I think, unconsciously can tell a difference. Unconsciously? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. They just they subconsciously know that it sounds better, but they don't know they don't know why. Subconsciously, unconsciously, subconsciously. Because unconscious is like you're knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> they're sleeping and they're like. Yes, this music is so much better. <laughs> And then we're going to try to line up telepathically. God, this gonna isn't going to work because we're, we're not in person. I bet this isn't going to work at all. There's going to be too much let's, lag let's over try. the internet. We're going to give it five okay. tries. So when I say I'm going to go three, two, one, go, we're going to close our eyes. And then we're going to try to clap at the same time. Okay. Okay. Ready? Close your eyes. Yeah. And then after I say go, whenever you feel like you're ready to clap, you clap. So three, okay. Okay. two, one, go. <laughs> no chance. Okay. Are you going to say go again? No, I, we're just, just feel it. <laughs> I can't even hear your clap. Are you clapping? I haven't clapped yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I just about knocked over my mic. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, that's we'll, we'll call that try number one out of three. Oh, there we go. You should just like in post to edit it so that it sounds like we clapped at the same time. Okay, last try. Don't you dare open your eyes. Okay. Wait, were you not ready? No, I wasn't ready. Okay, are you ready now? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay okay i'd i'd so, say we're pretty uh, synced up we're synced up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um but anyways welcome back everybody to the creative crunch podcast i am reed this is ben um and we are back and better than ever uh we yeah. posted our like 2023 recap a couple weeks ago two weeks ago and uh here we are middle of january what's what what have you been up to ben you've had uh You've had quite the, the go. This is our out first the, recorded episode. This is our first time recording in 2024. Is that right? Yeah, because we did it right before Christmas at the Marion Library. Um, God, I feel like so. So since then, I feel like you've uh, you've had quite a lot go on. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's weird. Like in the beginning of January or beginning of December. I feel like things started to just like fall apart as far as not fall apart. Things started to just pile on quickly with um, Lucy and like she got, she got sick her first time we signed her up for daycare. She got sick. And then um, she, I think she went to daycare. We paid for, it was like three weeks of daycare and she went like six days total or something. Um, she in December sick. because she was sick. And, um, then the first day of January, she broke her arm. Um, and then her cast fell off. She got sick again, got a double ear infection. She's still recovering from that. Lauren got sick. And so I had to take like two days to watch Lucy cause they were both sick and I got sick. sick. Oh my gosh. You got sick in there too. Gosh. Oh yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, that was the. I'm th- I'm the type of person that I feel like in most scenarios I could, if like I got sick the day of a wedding, I could still perform. Like it would suck and I would, if I was like throwing up or something, I would still like, I would go to the bathroom, get sick and then get back to doing my job. Um, I would feel like trash. I would just take it very easy and do the basic stuff. But man, this stomach flu that I had and then Lauren eventually got, that was like Bad. the worst stomach flu I've ever had. I was getting sick like every hour. 
um, throughout the night yeah. too. It's worse when it happens at nighttime because you feel like you need to be in bed sleeping, but you like literally can't sleep because you feel like trash. And I had the worst body aches I've ever had. Like I felt like I was, I just got done running like a marathon. I was so sore. I was like rolling out my back and stretching my legs and oh my God, it was horrible. It took like three days to finally start to feel back to like 80%. That does not sound fun. But, uh, yeah. And I, 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 I hope, <laughs> I hope if you actually had the stomach flu, like at a wedding, you wouldn't. You you wouldn't just power through it. Just uh, yeah, I mean it's, it's contagious. I mean it's tricky. I mean yeah, you'd wear a mask or something. I think the stomach flu is only contagious through saliva. Like if I if I spit or, or like if I touch something or um, kissed all the guests or something like that. Yeah, if I kissed the bride or groom, <laughs> um, then it would then I would pass it on. Um, but it's like I when people I don't won't. wash their hands and stuff. Yeah. That reminded me. And I won't name any names, but do you remember the wedding where we were saying oh, bye to the couple? And the bride literally was about to just kiss us both on the lips. I think we've had like two of those weddings, two or three of There's them. There's been a couple, a couple moments. But it was just like, obviously, it was like the end of the night. It was a big party. But... I have never felt so uncomfortable with how close she was to our faces saying goodbye. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting to me because, like, that's probably completely normal for them. Um, yeah. I think everyone yeah. just has their, like, looking back at it now, I'm not that, like, if I feel like if we went and filmed her wedding again, we wouldn't question it. We'd be like, this is normal, and we would be, fine, like, comfortable with it, but being a first-time yeah, having that happen the first time, having him, having her that close to our face, um, was kind of a shock. Yeah, like, whoa. The only thing, the only thing that would have been more <laughs> make it more uncomfortable if we did it again is like if she actually did just go for the kiss, <laughs> like the, the face <laughs> yeah. closeness was fine, and like the heavy eye contact was whatever, uh, it, uncomfortable at the at the beginning. But yeah, if we did it again, it'd be fine. Just just no smooching, and <laughs> and we'll be all right. But. Yeah, that that made yeah, me. Yeah, it's interesting that how everyone about... has like different, different personal space. Um, yeah, and like trying to understand, like, are they a hugger? Are they not a hugger? Are they a physical touch? Per like, you know, like, are you a handshake? <laughs> but yeah, that's always so. That's like the first thing that you have to decide when you show up at a wedding. Like, all right, am I gonna hug this person? Am I gonna? I'm just gonna say hi. Am I gonna be like, kind of more internal, like? chill or am i going to be more extroverted throughout the day it's it's there's a lot that goes into like the pre like the pre-planning or like trying to, to feel the energy of a wedding day <laughs> believe it or not um but yeah that just made me think um, of that and i was like gosh that was an uncomfortable moment cool um, um what do you have something to say or yeah but what i was saying in? was like that's that's it that's cold i had uh or that flu i had uh I don't think I could have. I don't think I could have performed at a wedding. I didn't, like. I think I would have had to tell the couple, "Hey, I'm sorry, I can't." And it's crazy how quickly it came on. It was like 4 p.m. and I went to put Lucy to bed. Um, at like si at 4 p.m. I started to feel sick, and then six, I was putting Lucy to bed, and I was at a point when I was putting Lucy to bed where I was like, "I'm gonna have to toss her in the crib and run to the bathroom." even if she wakes up. Um, luckily, I was able to get her to sleep, but then from like six until like that next morning, it was brutal. Gosh, um, that. And man, no, it, it makes me think like, what would happen in a situation where if it came on that quickly the morning of a wedding, like it's it's crazy to me to think like oh you get sick you can't go to the wedding so you're in charge of, like unexpectedly you get sick does that mean you have to refund them seven eight thousand dollars because you unluckily got this like flu like how does that like I know people put in their contracts things like oh uh, act of God like things yeah, that are it, it, they can't control. 
It probably just like is that just tough luck problem. for the couple? Like I feel like it's such a terrible situation. Well, yeah, I don't know because like we both have the non-refundable retainer, and I don't know. Like me personally, if like I couldn't make it and I couldn't find someone to come shoot your wedding, I would work something out with them and be like, "You will get your money back." I feel so bad, or like we'll plan like let's go to the mountains and shoot like a little like low key oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, like on my dime sort of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that's never happened. Like on a wedding day, you were helping me at a wedding though, where I was feeling pretty bad <laughs> and I went and yeah, I think the that's the of benefit car. of having somebody that you can trust with you. Yeah. That was also a wedding. But gosh, if like it was two, like at a wedding, <clears throat> I'm just trying to imagine if it was a wedding where you had a second shooter that maybe shoots with you twice a year or three times a year. Like, I don't know really if you could be like, hey, I need you to take lead. You'd have to. Yeah. Like, I mean, what else are you going to do? That would be tough. Well, moral of the story, take care. T- let's take care of ourselves. <laughs> Honestly, I think in 2024, I'm, now that I have a kid, I think I'm literally just going to start stocking up on multivitamins and, like, mm. trying to just be as cautious leading up to weddings. Um to try can, to yeah. prevent myself from getting sick. I have like a three day period. So like say the wedding on Saturday. So on Wednesday, I'll be like, I'm going to eat super clean and like super light. I'm just going to chug so much water, take all my vitamins and stuff and like try to have that time frame. But like Sunday, Monday, and even Tuesday, sometimes I'm a little less like I've got time to recover if something were to happen. But uh, yeah, that's an anxiety. I think a lot of, a lot of wedding people have is like, God, what if I get sick? Yeah, so today we're going to just kind of go over some of Ben and I's, like probably a lot of filmmakers too, but our most useful filmmaking tools um, on the, the post-production side and like the day of a wedding, um, what tools that we find um, kind of save us a lot of time or save us in like in those crunch times and uh, – just kind of what helps elevate um, our films to, you know, what they can be. And, um, yeah, do we want to start with uh, post-production or do we want to start with, like, production day, like wedding day tools? I think we talk about wedding day tools. We'll just kind of do it in order. But, um, yeah, these are just over the past five years things that we have found useful and well worth their money well yeah let's let's dive right in so on a wedding day um these are just a short list maybe we'll talk about other things but some tools that we find uh irreplaceable extremely valuable um you know for what we're trying to do for the stories we're trying to tell so number one and i'm sure we have talked about it a ton on the podcast and just in general um is mics every sort of mic that can uh, record any part of audio that is um, going on throughout throughout the wedding day. Um, I know Ben and I use different lav mics, but um, just the importance of audio in your wedding film, um, it is an irreplaceable tool. But Ben Ben's kind of the king uh, with mics and, and getting good audio from, from wedding day, so I'll let him... Um, I don't know if I'd say I'm necessarily the king. I, I feel like... I mean, we're in a group of videographers. Like we have a, we have some fellow videographer friends that all kind of, they'll get gear and then they'll be like, "This is, a, this is a good piece of gear to get," and um, we kind of decide what um, benefits certain pieces of equipment have and what they don't have. So like, there's certain situations where I might use one lav mic versus using a different lav mic. Um, I think for me the this is definitely not a cheap option, but the benefit of using the tentacle sinks for the simply for the feature of being able to once it's hooked up and like for the bride for instance when it's in the bride simply being able to hit the on my fo- open the app on my phone and hit the speaker option to listen to what it sounds like is huge you know that the mic was placed in the right location you're getting good audio 
Um, and then being able to, rather than going up to her and be like, hey, I need to check the mic, you can literally just open the app when you're Make sure um, it's rolling. before the ceremony and like open the app and you can see that it's still recording and you can turn it on and listen to it to see if it still sounds good if like the mic moved or something accidentally. That and yeah. that alone makes it easily worth it. Um, but then there's also the things like 32-bit float that has saved me a few times and that's like the main mics that I use for the bride and groom. Um, and then I also have the Tascam dr 10 Pro that I use for the officiant. I mean, it's a great mic. Um, I feel like the officiant, there's rarely a situation where they're screaming. So 32-bit float may not necessarily be something that mm -hmm. is going to help. I mean, if there's a listener out there that doesn't know what 32 bit float is, it essentially, I don't know, how would you explain it? It just gives you a lot of wiggle room where if someone's talking super loud and your audio is speaking, it's easier to bring it down or vice versa. If someone's talking really quietly and you're getting a really low feed, it's easier to bring it up and for it to still sound uh, pretty solid. Um, that's probably the yeah, most so dumbed like down condensed way to say it. There's like different, so like if you're going to record, a lot of people have those pen recorders. That's a 16, if you're going to record that in MP3, um, which is essentially, I like to picture it kind of like photographers shooting in JPEG versus RAW. Like MP3 is the JPEG version of audio. Um, so if you're going to record an MP3 with like a pen recorder, it's going to be like 16-bit. Um which is a pretty low bit rate for those recorders. And then um, if you're going to record in Wave with a pen recorder, it'll be like 24-bit or like the Tascam DR10Ls. Those are 24-bit. And that's just a little more wiggle room. But you can still, if someone screams, it's going to hit a mm -hmm. ceiling that it can't be recovered, kind of like you're going to crush your highlights or crush your blacks. Um, like if it's too quiet or if it's too loud, you're not going to be able to recover it. And then 32-bit float is like, I mean, it essentially raises the ceiling and the floor so that you, it's a lot easier to recover those things. So if somebody screams, you can just bring it down in post so it's not distorted, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh... honestly, it feels like magic. I don't, like, I was thinking about it the other day. 32-bit float just just came out. Like, we were living in a time where 32-bit float was released. Is there anything that could be better than 32-bit float, or have we reached the peak of audio recording? Well, I feel like they probably said that about, like, 4K when 4K came out, and now there's 8K, 10K, 12K. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I don't like. If you can't peak with 32-bit float, like, my only thing I could consider is maybe the n noise floor is where the next advancement would come from. Like maybe you can just completely remove noises that aren't close to the mic. Um, mm -hmm. Like that would be the next advance. I, Cause I, I just can't see what would be the next big improvement. I feel like there'll always be improvement of when something is too loud. Cause like even with 32 bit flow, you can still scream and have everything peaked. So like just, but it's very rare for those scenarios. So it's almost like unnecessary to make anything better, but they're obviously going to keep trying. Like that's just how technology and stuff works. I am curious though, to see like with audio, what, what comes next with, you know, float. Yeah. Like, like I feel like, like if you get a 32 bit float device now, that's going to last you a long time. They're not going to come out yeah. with something better than that um, for a while. That's all. That's all a lot of information, but <laughs> yeah, um, we just we just info dumped on everybody. Those are just labs. Uh, the other yeah. lab that we that I I uh, like to use and um, we'll use at your weddings too is the DJI mics, um, or like a Rode Wireless Go or something. I prefer the DJI mics simply because it's smaller. Yeah, I can actually show you. I have them right here. And those they're mics are like, super nice tiny. too. Yeah, because like on the fly, uh, it's easy to mic someone really quick with those mm -hmm. things um, rather than like 
the Tascam DR10L or even, you know, obviously the, the tentacle sync, but, um, those are nice. And those are very, uh, versatile too. Yeah. Magnet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're easy Something for that we do. women. Very true. Something that we do with those two, that's kind of more, I don't want to say like, it's not original because there are many people that do this, but I kind of the interview setups that you and I all do where we walk around and just interview the wedding party, the bride, the groom, you know, um, I think that's, those are the mics we're using in, in those scenarios as yeah. well. So, uh, now then, speaking of that, yeah. the, so the DJI, this is the first version of the DJI mics, um, which is 24 bit. So these mics can peak. Now they're still great for um, weddings. I mean, people aren't like I mainly use them for like the father of the bride or like a female officiant. Um, I might start considering to use them if like the bride's dress is really um, hard to mic. I might try to start using these and like clipping it to the inside of the top of the dress. But we did that at one of my weddings um, out in Dubuque. Yeah, and it, it seemed to work pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's easy to hide and like they don't have to be. Obviously, we like it when they're mic'd all day, but in that case, like you can just mic them for the important moments and then you know take it take it right yeah. off. So, but yeah, so the, we do the we'll do like the interviews with them um, because they're just convenient. You attach to a little microphone thing. Um, but the downside is that a lot of times we do these interviews during like the reception when it's louder and we'll be on the dance floor interviewing people and people are screaming and it's even as much as we try to adjust the settings and plan for people screaming, they still, it still gets distorted. So like mm. with the new mics that just came out yesterday, um, they're now 32 bit flow. And so I'm thinking like, is it worth it? Because we probably use them for interviews more than anything. Um, to be able to have it a might, mic yeah. that that isn't going to peak. Um, they also came out with a white version, and I'm like, okay, wonder if I were to uh, get the white version because a lot of times I put them inside of the dad's white shirt um, mm -hmm. underneath his tie. Um, It'd be easier to mic a dress, too, that way, too. Yeah, that, too. So I'm like, maybe I need to sell my DJI mics and get the new ones. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's definitely on my list. Yet. That's that's on my um, list for my twenty twenty four yeah. purchases is the DJI mics and then the the tentacle sinks as well because I'm still rocking those uh, DR. Yeah, tentacles. literally being able to like having this in your sling. Okay, I this is just a little side like note. Like I think the DJI mics might be one of my favorite purchases of twenty twenty three. I think the versatility of being able to oh, dad's here, like, open this up, pull this guy out, and hitting record, because it has an internal recorder. I don't even I don't even use the receiver. I, I don't even plug it in. The only time we plug it in is for interviews, because it's easier to sync stuff later. But if you know, like, pulling this guy out, and also just for BTS, like, the content that you can get to just put it, like, clip it on you really quickly. Yeah. And uh, actually, I don't know if you knew this feature, but with the new DJI mics, um, they now have Bluetooth linking. So, like, if you want to hook it up to your phone, you don't even need to plug anything into your phone. You can just Bluetooth it, the mic to your phone, and the That's audio nice. will go to your phone. So you don't have to plug anything in the bottom or anything. So BTS is going to be even easier. Yeah, that's um, that's nice. It'll definitely be, I think, on my my purchase purchase list before um, before uh, the new wedding season starts. But, but regardless, we, regardless yeah. of the mics that you have, I think it's mics are probably one of the most valuable things. Yeah. Mics and audio equipment is probably one of the best things you can purchase as a filmmaker. Just for storytelling alone, for the moments. Even if it's just a shotgun um, mic to put on your camera yeah. to get a little yeah. better audio. Yeah, mics, audio, all that stuff. Big thing for storytelling, big thing for just moments in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But audio, audio equipment is game changer. Yeah, and we could literally, we could do a whole episode talking about 
the different kinds of audio equipment, how to use them, blah, blah, blah. But um, moving on, the next thing, uh, just for our shooting tools that have really helped us enhance, you know, enhance what we do are lights. Lights and light stands um, are an absolute game changer when it comes to receptions for lighting toasts for lighting dances um, and even in some scenarios um, lighting the ceremony if it's indoors and it's dark um, it just brings a whole new level of depth to uh, the the images that we're getting um, and again once again ben is very good at uh, drawing thing he draws things out like what this uh what, what the reception is going to look like and he plans out where he'll put his lights where he'll put his couples and um, 99% of the time it looks, uh, pretty good and pretty flattering for, for the couples. So I think that, I think what it is, is it's more my anxiety trying to be prepared for the unpredictable, if that makes sense. Like I just, I, I hate getting put in situations where it looks bad and I can't do anything about it. So I try to be prepared so I can make sure it looks good without having to cause a ruckus or be an eyesore when I'm like trying to like, I hate when people take the mic off of the mic stand because I'm not going to go up in the middle of their speech and be like, Hey, put that back on there. Um, that, yeah, if <laughs> easily, probably one of the biggest pet peeves for, for all all wedding videographers um, in the industry, um, if you see a mic on a mic stand, it's probably there for a reason. Uh, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Like I sometimes I forget to tell the couple or the people that are speaking, like, "Hey, just try to make sure you stay there." And when I forget to tell them and they take it off, then I'm like, "Gosh, why didn't I tell them?" But because um, mm -hmm. when There's they take it off, it's like it's bad. It looks worse. Yeah. And there's always going to be someone that, that takes it off, but specifically for like the lighting situations, we put a mic stand there because we have, we have made the light look how it's supposed to look when the person is standing in that position and not kind of wandering around. Um, and it just, it looks better. It looks, I don't know what it is. Um, you do less like moving your hands and you're standing there and you can talk to them. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just kind of a random tip and part of the tool tools that we use for lighting are our mic stands. So yeah, mic stands, and I think making sure you just tell people, hey, it, it'll. It, I mean, yeah, it sucks telling them, but telling them, um, please, please don't move. Uh, we've got this set up so you look really great standing there, um, mm -hmm. and we just want to make sure we capture in the best light possible. Um, yeah, that's always the move is telling if them. If you can crack a joke with them, it'll it'll maybe make it yeah. a little easier for them to grasp. But um, just yeah. warning just them. Always saying is super helpful. This is the most flattering angle that we can get, um, and so we want to make sure, obviously, like this that this looks good. Um, so if we can just have everyone stay put where you are, because we you know we set up our lights, we set up our camera um, for those flattering angles obviously uh it's something that we pay attention to quite i want to touch on that i want to touch on Go. that for a second um i think that people some people some videographers or some photographers might say i'm very hands-off i just want to document the day the way it is um i don't want to try to make something that it isn't but i think i think that's looking at it the wrong way. I think what well, what we're doing is we want to make it very memorable. Um like it's not just for video, it's also for the presentation of the thing that's happening. Um yeah, I'll even I'll even say it the people that are like and I I'm this way sometimes too, like if a situation is just too much work to like or not too much work, but uh, like if time is something that we're dealing with. Um, but the people that are like, I'm just gonna shoot everything the way that it is because that's how it happens. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's looking at it kind of the wrong way, like you said, and it's honestly kind of lazy um, in a way too, because like by moving your couple and setting up lights and setting up a mic stand, that's not changing anything of the day at all. Like not like there's not a we're just moving you maybe five feet in front of like your head table sort of situation because it looks better. And like you said, with the memorable, the memorable parts, and obviously you want to look flattering when you look back at all this stuff, like we're not shifting how the day is going in any sort of way by making sure things look right. Um, and I do think people kind of lean into that. Well, I want to shoot it how it is because that's the way that it's, that's the way that it is. But um, no, part of our job is service, doing a service for a couple and um, moving them is one of those things or like just making sure it's good. Yeah, I think we're the professionals and it's our job to tell the couple like, hey, this is what is going to look best um, for the thing that's happening um, and telling them and if like in a situation like they might, the, the I mean, they don't do weddings regularly. The guests don't do weddings regularly. Um, mm -hmm. They're just gonna stand up and be like, "I assume this is the best place to give a speech right here, right in this dark, shadowy spot." Um, mm -hmm. Like their process of deciding what they think looks better better will be way different than, um, like what our perspective is from going to multiple weddings. Mm -hmm. And if you, yeah, you if you have told your couple if you have given your couple any reason to not trust you then i think that's another issue you gotta figure out but every time i've gone to a wedding the couple is like we trust you you're the professional and they they don't even question i'm like hey we're gonna move you guys out front um the only people that ever question me are probably dads father of the brides and i don't know if that's a seniority thing like they think they know better than me um but i think couples know for the most part that you are a professional and you've been to enough weddings that you know what's going to look best and what's the best route to take you just have to go in with confidence and tell them hey this is what's going to look best and they will trust you yeah and it's funny you say that too because i feel like dads are almost always the people that take the mic off the mic stand too. And then they just, and usually they're the first one to give a speech. So then they just set the tone for everyone not to use the mic stand. And, um, but yeah, me too. Dads are kind of the only people that have run into issues with like, Hey, we're going to have you be here. And because of X, Y, Z professionally. And then I, I don't know, sometimes yeah. they just seem to have an issue with it. The longer I've been doing it, I'm, when a dad does take it off the mic stand, I'm kind of like, oh, whatever. It, he's there's no stopping this train. Like yeah. you, like you and just that, let it happen, and you just accept that, it. Exact. And document it. Yeah, and if you try, that's when it becomes weird. If you're trying to shift something of the day, if you went up and you're like, hey, put that back and stand here, that is too far. That is manipulating the day in a way that's not not how it yeah. happens but not specific, like not specifically by moving someone. I don't know. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but um, it's just the, the people that are like, shoot it the way it is. But that's not necessarily. Yeah. I think it's just a combination you know. of in being an introvert and not being brave enough to, so you think of an excuse to um, not confront something or not um confront potential what, what would be the correct term potential um confrontation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I th and i i mean i think it, it really comes down to you just got to be brave you just got to do it you gotta if someone tells you no then I mean, I'm not going to sit there and try to fight with them. I'm not going to be like, you can't do that. If they're, if they're going to be that upset about it, I'm just like, whatever, sure. Yeah, yeah. And then just always being but communicative. But rarely does that happen. Yeah, I can maybe maybe two or three times um, in the last two years have I had someone be like, no, we'd rather just stay where we are. 
Um, and I mean, if that's, that's what you want and that's what you envisioned, like we're not going to force you to change anything. Um, but we're going to suggest things that will, you know, make things look better and maybe go more fluently and smoothly and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so three, uh, for tools and stuff that we love, that we use, utilize at our value, um, bags and organization, um, being organized with your Pelican case, your camera backpack, um, your sling, if you wear one, that's kind of just like a, essentially like a fanny pack, um, being organized with all that stuff saves you so much time, probably so much energy. Um, and you will thank yourself during the day over and over and over again. Um, if you are utilizing, um, your bags and storage, essentially. My, uh, Pelican case, I've gotten it down to a T so that my Pelican case is everything that I need for a ceremony. Like I don't even need to open it until it's time for the ceremony. Everything that's in my backpack is things that I might potentially use starting Before. right away in the morning. So like mm -hmm. I have my little lights that I might use for details. I have my 85 millimeter, my 24 to 70, my wide 16 millimeter, my drone, um, and any other little tools that I might find helpful. Um, but yeah, having, and even in the sling, you decide, okay, I need to carry all my audio with me in case I need to mic somebody. I want to have my batteries on me. Um, any other essential tools like maybe scissors or um, headphones, I don't know, things like that. Yeah, and if I, if I had to pick one that is the most, the best tool for organization wise, it would definitely be the sling bag. Um, I've got the Peter McKinnon one, but being able to keep batteries, um, audio things in there, just everything you might need and kind of like in a pinch. Um, gosh, I can't tell you how many times that thing has saved my, saved my butt, um, in different situations, especially with batteries or even with mics and stuff. So, um, if you take anything yeah, from this podcast, it's uh it's it's grab a sling bag. Yeah, and you want to grab a sling bag that you like. Um one that you're not going to hate. I I mean, I think I've been through three different sling bags and I'm finally on the same one that Reed has, the Peter McKinnon. And I think the ability, I think the one most useful feature on that bag is that little rubber band thing that you can use to just close it quickly and open quickly. Yeah, that alone saves so much time. Yeah, so you don't have to zip it. I wish there was a way we could uh, tell. So if we were just zipping it and unzipping it, if I wish there was a way we could see like the the actual amount of time that it takes of just simply zipping and unzipping. I bet it would I bet it'd reach a couple oh, minutes. Yeah. Like five oh, minutes maybe. Ten minutes even. Um, Especially when the zipper gets yeah, stuck. That thing or holds something. so much. And you can even use it for like using it as support. Um you can make it really short and then use it to like put your camera on and use it as like a camera support. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's no, a lot of useful nice. features. So you don't have to carry a bag all around. You can put a lens in it if you want to be able to switch later quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So staying on top of your organization, your bags, your Pelican cases, um, it's an, it's an underrated thing. I mean, obviously everyone has a way to, transport all their gear but just being on top of it and knowing where everything is at every point of the day um uh, inv or invaluable super valuable um but yeah let's uh let's move on to the next one we're gonna skip our last one just because i i feel like we could do an entire podcast over the camcorder alone um so i think we should just kind of save that for like its own its own entire yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. about how the camcorder has really changed the game um, for our wedding films and for other wedding films. But um, number four, yeah. this is a huge one. Uh, huge, huge, huge one, especially for me and for Ben. Um, snacks and drinks. That's probably the most valuable tool um, besides like your camera, obviously. Um, having Ben and I, I mean, we have Gardettos, also known as pocket guards. Um, and that comes from Ben wearing cargo pants and just putting a whole bag of Gardettos in them. Uh, and it just kind of stuck that we, we call it pocket guards. Um, 
God, those but things taste so good, though, on a wedding day. I don't know what it is. It's the salt, the crunch, the texture. Man, it's it's good. I'm my, and my it's mouth always you always there. are like, oh, you 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 remember. You're like, oh wait, I have these guards in my pocket, and you like eat them, and they just taste so good. Pocket flavored is even better, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a silly one, but like honestly having some sort of snack food drink throughout the day just to like keep your energy and keep you know a wedding day is a long day and you're gonna get hungry before dinner before lunch um and you're gonna get thirsty so just making sure you're staying on top of having something eating something that is providing some sort of energy for you um is incredibly valuable and something that probably took too long for us to learn We'll move on to our our most useful filmmaking tools for post-production. Um, and like I said, this could be a whole other podcast and maybe we'll do it too, but we'll just kind of, we'll kind of whip through these. So um, number one, probably the most important, one of the most important is a music bed or some sort of uh, music licensing site um, for your, for your films. Yeah, music bed is a painful one to pay, but it's well worth it when you start yeah. using it. Yeah, music bed is definitely the I mean, most. As long expensive. as you're booking weddings for more than what is it now, ninety bucks a month? Yeah, I don't know. I just I pay the yearly one. Um, I think it's cheaper if you pay it yearly. I mean, yeah, it's a. Uh, So for, I think it's like ninety nine bucks a month. So I mean, it's like a hundred, it's like twelve hundred bucks a year, which it's a painful price. But like, as long as you're booking at least one wedding for fifteen hundred, I mean that covers the cost for unlimited music for a year. Mm-hmm. And music bed, I mean, all music licensing, like if if you can't afford music bed, you still need to get some sort of music licensing just because of the importance of music in your films. It's, it's literally the flow of the entire video. Um, without it, it would just be, <laughs> it would just be like a long podcast essentially. Um, but, uh, music bed is by far probably the most popular and the most, um, just the most selection and customized custom how do you say that customizable search features um so yeah yeah like the key and beats per minute and if it builds or not um yeah. keys probably be the yeah, most useful one there's just something about the music bed music that feels like it's on a whole it's kind of like uh, if you were, I feel like, it's almost like if you're buying sunglasses from a gas station versus sunglasses from, it, it, it feels like you're buying Zenny, it feels like you're buying glasses online versus getting glasses at your eye doctor. Like, yeah, the eye doctor one is going to be a lot more expensive, but you know, those glasses are going to be high quality glasses. Mm -hmm. Um, versus if you get like the, I mean, yeah, the music that you're going to get online is going to be fine. Um, or the glasses you get online are going to be fine, but the, maybe they're less scratch resistant. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of the quality of the music from music bed is on like this whole different level that, even couples, I think, unconsciously can tell a difference. Unconsciously? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know, I don't know how else to describe it. They just they subconsciously know that it sounds better, but they don't know. They don't know why. Subconsciously, unconsciously, subconsciously. Because unconscious is like you're knocked out. <laughs> 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 they're sleeping and they're like, "Yes, this music is so much know. better." <laughs> uh yeah um, <laughs> yeah i don't know there's um, something that's 
just way better about music bed music i don't know what it is if the qual the sound maybe they're using some different version of recording they it's kind of like netflix requires a specific camera maybe they require like a specific i don't know studio i don't know it's i don't know yeah music bed is like the world of stuff i understand yeah, music bed is like legitimate artists and bands. And not saying like the other ones aren't, but I feel like Soundstripe and Artlist are other great ones too. But I feel like that's even maybe people that just like make music in their bedroom that you can upload it to that too. So music bed, there there's definitely probably some qualification that you need um in your recording and stuff. Um, to become like a music bed artist and there's a lot there's a lot of music bed artists too that are like decently big names as well so um, I think it's just a more professional more maybe there's more passion behind it um, the music side of things like someone started music bed and has like a strong strong passion for music itself so that'd be my guess number two would be your desk setup what what tools are you using on your on your desk, Ben? That that you really enjoy and find helpful in your in your editing time. Um, I desk. Okay, so first of all, I think a quality chair is very helpful. Um, a chair that you enjoy sitting in. Um. I have two chairs. I have one that is like the one that you have that you can. It's like a stool almost that kind of rocks a little bit. So it's like oh. a sit stand stool where you're kind of standing. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that because it doesn't. I don't like get sore from sitting on it because you can easily like a like shift your weight on it so you're not just sitting on the same thing for super long. Um, I like yeah. that and. Um, I think just a a way to organize stuff on your desk, like a way to keep things organized. Mm -hmm. I think underrated features, underrated features for, for, for desk setup is like, just, I mean, you obviously have the obvious ones like your computer or your monitor. Um, something I've been using quite a bit now is my iPad is like a second screen, uh, just a smaller screen that's right below my my main monitor, um, and I've been been liking that quite a bit. It's like I'm not a two monitor guy, but since the iPad's small enough, it's just I don't know. There's something about it that I enjoy. Um, if I have to give one shout out, um, and not to Travis this time, it, it would be uh, the MX Master. MX Master 3 mouse from Logitech. Um, this thing just fits in your hand uh, so beautifully. It's comfortable, feels good, it's accurate. It, you can customize the buttons on it. Um, I love it, especially for editing. So um, yeah, to save time, I'll just say that. There's a bunch of stuff on my desk that I use, but those those um, are the main things. I think for both of us, though, I think a huge one is figuring out a setup that is convenient for working. So like with us, we figure, I think we figured out that using a docking station was super convenient with being able to sit at a desk at home and work very efficiently, making it like a nice editing on a larger screen at home with speakers and stuff. But then we can easily unplug the one cable and, go on the road to a coffee shop and go edit on our laptop because everything is just powered straight from the laptop. Yeah, no, that, that is definitely the most, one of the most valuable things is like, I like my desk setup, but like my office is also my bedroom right now. Um, so it's, I just spend a lot of time at home. Um, so it is so nice not being able to have to unplug anything except one thing and go to a coffee shop and then open my laptop and I'm right where I left off. Um, so yeah, if you, I feel like most people probably, yeah, you don't have to close out of anything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to close out of premiere. You don't have to, you can literally just close your laptop, unplug and go. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely probably the most valuable thing that we have. (laughs) There's so many, so many valuable things, but, uh, moving on, we can talk about this a little bit too. 
uh, is subscriptions to like different assets. So a couple of subscriptions that Ben and I have, we have Envato Elements, which is um, kind of like motion graphics, text graphics. Um, there's like, you know, there's some um, uh, videos and things we can get on there too. Um, Epidemic Sound for like sound effects, um, which is a whole podcast in itself too, talking about the importance of um, adding sounds to your films that uh, give it a whole new level of depth. Um, and Ben Ben has a couple too um, that I don't have that he can talk on. Um, yeah, so yeah, he, so he mentioned Envato Elements. That's a that's definitely a big one. Um, and I think that alone Envato Elements for the motion graphics and stuff like for. Um, text animations or um, maybe you want like an overlay or something but you've used one too consistently so you're like it's time to change get a new one so you can go get a different overlay uh, without having to pay every time you want to get a new one um, it's kind of like music unlimited assets mm -hmm. um, but then I also use uh, denoising plugins so like I'll use Topaz Video AI, which is pretty convenient, allows me to sharpen low quality stuff or remove noise. I also use Neat Video. Um, there's also things like Cinema Grade, which can kind of help with color grading a little bit. Um, or uh, I know Reed and I both have this one with uh, it's a this is an effect that you can learn in your editing software, but it's a lot easier if you just if you to save time you can. Download. I know Jay and Mac has it. It's, uh, they sell this plugin, and it's called like CineSoft, I think. And it essentially makes it look like you're using a diffusion filter on your footage, so it gives it more of like a film look, like a, it's glowing and it kind of blooms the highlights a little bit. But yeah, just those are just some of the ones that I use pretty frequently. Yeah, and and a big one. It, it doesn't really help with like our editing specifically, but it kind of helps um, hold us accountable. It's something called Hubstaff, um, something that Ben and I both use. And we even have like challenges, but what it does is it, uh, it like keeps track of what we're doing um, down to um, like how much time we're spending in Premiere versus like what we're doing, like what links we're on. Like if we're on YouTube for four hours a day, it's gonna tell us that, which is kind of scary, but also, um, like I said, it, it, it holds us accountable and just gives us, I don't know. I don't know what, besides accountability, what is it, what does it do for you, Ben? I think it helps me track how long it takes to edit like a film. Cause I'll have like, mm -hmm. every time I start a new film, I'll create a new workspace so that it starts that workspace at zero. Um, and so just seeing, I think that. If I get to the end of the day and I've gotten at least five plus hours of at least spent in Premiere, then I feel pretty good about myself. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my goal is always going to be four to five hours in Premiere, like editing. I feel like that's the that's the hat that that timeline where you can be very productive. But if you're spending time past that, which we all have and we do, and I probably will today. Um, sometimes it just gets a little harder to be productive and like super precise with what you're doing just because staring at a screen and putting all your effort and thought and everything into what you're doing um, can obviously have take a toll on on your mental or whatever you're doing but um, yeah hub staff is super helpful to yeah hub staff is pretty nice to um, to just kind of track track our time and stuff so yeah. Um, and then the last one, I know we should start wrapping up here. Um, what, this is another one that we could have a whole podcast on, but um, our Premiere Pro workflows that just kind of help um, with with our editing. Um, and a lot of this, I think you can do in um, whatever, you know, uh, uh, What? why can't I think of the other editing? Final Cut and Da Vinci? Da Vinci. Yep. But... Uh, just a few things that I think Ben and I both do. Um, gosh, this is hard to explain, like without showing. Um, 
So when you're editing, you, you're editing on a timeline and you can have multiple different timelines. You can have a ceremony timeline or sequence. You can call it, um, toast everything. Uh, something that Ben and I have been doing for probably the last two years or so is we make a timeline specifically for usable dialogue, um, from, from the wedding day. So we're, if we're scrubbing through the ceremony and the officiant says something really powerful, uh, we'll cut it and then we'll drag it to our usable timeline. Um, it's just a super easy way to help us stay a little bit more organized and um, be like, this is what we thought we would be able to use um, while we were going through all this audio and stuff. Um, that is a super useful tool and I use it for every single film that I'm working on that has um, some type of storyline or audio or whatever. So, Yeah, I think an efficient timeline or efficient uh workflow can definitely improve the overall editing experience and time that it takes you like i think one of the fastest one of the things that i think helped me was sandwich editing is being able to drag between different timelines really quickly um so i can uh see like what content i've used what content i haven't used um a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you used to do it and you tried to get me to do it for a couple times? You would put your iPad on a note and have it uh, like put it on voice to text. And you would just have it all on an iPad note and you would go through like the actual text, like not even the sound or anything. And organize it that way yeah that, gosh i should try to bizarre. do that with the text-based editing what a bizarre time <laughs> that was but yeah so i know we kind of were all over the place we're still uh we're still figuring out this whole this whole podcast thing um especially with our year-long breaks but this is episode two this year so um that's as far as we got last year so hopefully hopefully you'll hear from us again um oh you'll hear from us oh yeah but uh, we'll we'll end it with how we have been ending it in our last episodes. But what's what's something that's inspired you recently? I think, so I saw Grace, Grace T. Photography. She posted a video on TikTok. I think I, don't, I assume it was just TikTok, but she had said like, "How do I? Uh, how do I become more creative?" She was like asking how to be more creative because she feels like she's lost her creativity since becoming a mom and um, just with everything with like moving and stuff like that. Um, and it kind of made me think like, gosh, I feel like sometimes I've lost my creativity and I've gotten away with, like I've kind of fallen away from the uh, routines that I used to practice more frequently with like, being bored and like disconnecting from um, consuming content. Like for me, for some reason, I'm always like, if I'm washing dishes or something, I'm always trying to like put something on like a podcast or a YouTube video or something, but I need to practice. I think seeing her video kind of made me think to myself, like, gosh, I should really like make more time in my day to just not be consuming content. Um, because I feel like it's, setting me back as far as like being creative and um i think going into 2024 i want to have i think towards the end of my this last year i got really like mentally i feel like my i my brain fog was just at a high that i feel like it's never been at and um i feel like that partially due to consumption and just the chaotic new lifestyle that I'm living with having a kid and trying to manage a business yeah. and stuff. But I think it's time at least going into 2024 and this next year of weddings, I really want to make sure I'm practicing more disconnecting from consuming content and just being, I don't know, letting my brain chill for, even just 15 minutes a day, like go and go like leave my phone somewhere and just go lay on a bed and stare at the ceiling for 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, I've wanted to I think even today it's hard. 
it's hard to just disconnect. Even if you go to the gym, there's TVs everywhere. You could leave your phone at home and you'd still be consuming content because the gym is like TV is there. Um, TV, music. And yeah, you go everything. somewhere where there's not distractions at all. So that's why I'm saying like lay on a bed and stare at a ceiling. Uh, but driving, I think, would be a good way. Just go for a 15-minute drive and just not I, listen to anything and just stare at the road. I want to try to do that. It's like it's a popular thing right now, like a dopamine detox, like unnatural dopamine de- detox. And I've been trying to talk uh, talk Lauren into doing it with me, uh, but she's not super on board. She's also incredibly busy right now. With she's in her busy season, but like just deleting social media, not watching TV, um, only listening to like in 20 minutes of music a day um, and just trying to find those natural ways to uh, provide yourself with like dopamine instead of doom scrolling on TikTok or watching YouTube videos or um, just constantly always having something to stimulate you all the time. Um, Because I've been dealing with that too, like that brain fog kind of thing and uh, there's got to be got to be yeah, a way yeah. to, it gets, to fix it. It gets pretty dark. I feel like sometimes mm-hmm. when you just you feel like you can't think of new ideas, it starts to feel very lull. I don't know. Yeah. Or I wonder if we just did like there's one something day that's a very week. refreshing. I don't know. I feel like just daily 15 minutes of just disconnect is like all you really need. I feel like allows you to start generating new ideas. Um, yeah. just like yeah, exercise, maybe. I think. Maybe I'll start listening um, to like just, we should just try rain it. sounds or something when I'm uh, when I'm at the gym uh, or something. I mean, honestly. Like not music, not podcast. I have been doing this a lot recently too. I, I haven't even been listening to music or anything at the podcast or anything at the gym. I'm just... I'm just working out, doing my thing, and like, yeah, there's music playing above or whatever. But I'm I'm purposely trying to get lost in like my thoughts and ideas and stuff while while I'm doing that. So that's been super. That's been something I've enjoyed doing. But we should uh, we should do that. We should for the next. Okay, how about this? Well, this is one thing that we'll talk about next time. We'll just talk about what our experience is like. We should. Uh, We should do like, I don't know, accountability thing where we'll like text each other like, hey, I just completed my uh, 15 minutes for the day. I don't know if 15 or 30 would be better. I feel like 20. Maybe 20 is that I feel, sweet spot. Yeah, 20 minutes. But I feel like 20 minutes is that risky where you might fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Yeah. Like you might how about instead of how about, how about instead of – laying on a bed we sit in a chair and i mean you go for a walk you can yeah go for a walk it's freaking cold out though i just um, think just disconnecting so you're not distracted by anything yeah yeah let's do it let's uh so for the next i'm just weeks, trying to think of a situation where you get bored where there's literally nothing you can do to there's nothing you can do to consume your attention other than thinking like just thinking that's literally all you can do well yeah you're Um, just naturally letting your mind wander and letting your mind do what so that's why i said it's naturally but if there's a if you can sit in a chair or (laughs) stare out the window i don't know yeah i think staring out the window would be the move that might that might be it for me um something else that i've been doing recently too that has been like Mm -hmm. and here's here's my inspiring thing i guess um i've been Mm -hmm. reading a lot more and I didn't know if I would like reading nonfiction, um, mm-hmm. but I I read this book recently, and I was so captivated into the storytelling of this, and like I was imagining the scene, what these people look like, and like I was like watching it like a movie in my mind while I was reading it, and I know exactly that is what reading is, but I was like that has to be so good for my imagination and like my own creativity is letting oh, my yeah. brain like develop the scenes of like what what i'm reading and uh yeah so now now i'm i'm a reader now 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 my name actually makes sense yeah what was the book you were reading uh it was called bull mountain 
Um, I can't. It's somewhere. But it's basically like this this crime this crime book um, about like this family that's been you know like alcohol drugs like they've just been like this distributor sort of thing like up on this mountain and then one of the brothers of this family like became a sheriff um at the town over and it, it, it's 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 hard to like it was hard to put that book down i literally read it in like 12 days and that is not something that i do um but yeah reading nonfiction has uh kind of opened my imagination to something that's been been super cool so i'd recommend that yeah I, i've been wanting to uh that's something that i've always wanted to get into is reading i just it's hard for me to sit down and yeah i know it's so good for you holy cow like I just i felt like a kid again like imagining all this stuff you know how like you imagine playing with action figures you're imagining this huge cityscape or whatever and they're fighting but but it's just crazy it's just like a it's uh something that helps you work your imagination i don't know it's it very cool and very inspiring to me so uh, I, I will definitely that. continue to keep reading but cool anything else from you um i don't think so. i don't think so um cool. i do want to mention um i just want to give a little shout out to uh, travis we had someone come well yeah obviously shout out travis we have to shout, shout out yeah shout, shout out travis <laughs> but the uh we had someone comment on our video youtube video from last week um and it was someone that I assume we don't know. They just said, um, first video I've seen of yours and I subscribed to keep it up. Um, and their name was shout out to Olivia Wyatt, seven, five, three, eight, Olivia Wyatt, seven, um, five, three, eight. Shout out to you. Thank you for listening. So yeah, That's hopefully, uh, hopefully you, uh, like more of this content. Um, yeah I don't know. hopefully you're a real yeah. person <laughs> it's a bot <laughs> dude i saw on the tiktok on one of the things we posted on tiktok and i i don't care about this but i think it's just so funny like there's like three comments and it was quotes let's start a podcast like they they were obviously giving us shit or whatever and i just thought it was so oh funny. yeah Someone responded and quoted, let's be a troll or like, let's be an internet troll. I was like, gosh, I love the internet. Like the comment section is one of my favorite places on, on TikTok, Reddit, all that stuff. Just to see people waste their time being ridiculous or just being absolutely hilarious. Cause there's those people out there too. But, um, yeah, yeah. shout out, work. shout out to, shout out to those guys that, uh, that said, let's start a podcast. At least we're doing something. Yeah, shout out to those guys. There was a I saw another podcast talking about this girl on Instagram that posts um just posts like daily life content. And it's almost like she's leaned into the fact that everybody that comments on her videos is intentionally just being very mean. Like saying things like um, you really should delete your Instagram account. Uh, like they're going out of their way to intentionally make the comment as like hurtful as possible. But like she's like leaned into it and just is being more and more like herself. And uh, people are just feeding on this. Like, like there's no good comments. It's all bad comments. I should see if I can find it and then send it to you. Um, yeah, that's but it's that's just kind crazy. of funny how like someone was like, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna keep posting this stuff. People are just gonna be funny about. <laughs> Did you see how I uh, mean they can be? I think this was a while ago, but it was on like a show like America's Got Talent or something. I don't know who, but it was this musician that like posted a lot of stuff, and then she made her audition was she made a song out of the like the mean comments that she was getting on her videos and stuff. Um, I don't know. I think it's just so ridiculous. Oh yeah, if, that was good. if you're if you're an internet troll out there and commenting mean things, like why? 
why I, it doesn't make any sense to me at all but whatever enjoy enjoy your life doing that kind of thing but yeah cool I cool well yeah are we done that's good i think I all think right felt, um next week we might bring place, on a guest what? next episode yeah we're doing every two weeks um but we might we'll see we might do we might introduce a little thing called like a mini series or like like mini crunch <laughs> mini yeah mm-hmm. that's true a mini crunch that's but true. uh that could be fun, I think. Yeah. Regardless, we're going to see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, we might have a guest on. Who knows? We we actually don't know if we will or not, but maybe. Um, but thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to Olivia Wyatt7533 or whatever. Um, yeah, we appreciate yeah. it. Uh, shout out Travis. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. Yeah, we'll see you next time. And did you stop. did you blow a kiss? <laughs> there we go.